We've seen so much political interference in property in recent years, I thought by now I was pretty unshockable. But a policy has just been announced that has actually stunned me. The policy is aimed at Scotland, but this does not mean you can ignore it if you invest elsewhere. I'll explain what's been announced, and then at the end, I'll explain what this means for investors not just in Scotland, but across the UK. On the 6th of September, Nicola Sturgeon announced two pieces of emergency legislation, a rent freeze and a temporary ban on evictions. Both are due to be in place until at least the 31st of March, 2023. At least being a worrying couple of words when spoken by a politician. Let's break down each of these measures, starting with the least serious. The rent freeze isn't as big a deal as it first sounds because it only applies to existing tenancies. In Scotland, there are already various protections in place that limit rent increases within a tenancy, so it's not going to have all that much of a practical effect. However, the evictions ban is extremely troubling for two reasons. Firstly, the short-term reason. It means a tenant could stop paying rent today and there's nothing the owner can do about it for at least six months. That's six months of potentially having to meet mortgage payments and all other running costs with no income coming in. And that's six months until legal proceedings can start. And it's assuming that the ban isn't going to be extended. And then there's the longer term reason. If they do this now, what's to stop them doing it again? Evictions were banned for the first time during COVID when at least there was some kind of rationale. Millions of people were prevented from being working by the government's own measures, and landlords could apply to pause their mortgage payments if they were affected. This time, the only reason being given is the cost of living crisis. It's not clear to me why landlords are being singled out. There's no compulsion for supermarkets to freeze their prices, or to provide goods to someone whether they paid for them or not. And there's always some kind of crisis, so what's to stop them from doing this again every time unemployment ticks up, or every winter, or every time they want to do something that seems popular with part of their voter base? And this brings us on to the likely effects. It's hard to see how this won't lead to a reduction in the supply of rental property, at least temporarily. Because they have no recourse if the tenancy agreement is broken, Landlords will be extremely selective about who they rent to and may decide that this is the time to withdraw from the market entirely. This is bad news for everyone because there's already a massive supply and demand imbalance in Scotland. In common with the rest of the UK, rental supply is currently at half its normal level. And demand is absolutely exploding, with agents in Scotland reporting hundreds of inquiries per property. And just to be clear, the rent freeze won't do much to help this. The freeze is on rents within a tenancy. For new tenancies, landlords can still ask for the market rate. And remember, this is already the situation now, before these latest changes. If supply is reduced further, which seems likely, it's only going to get worse. And longer term, even if this is a one-off, I think it makes Scotland a lot less investable. If you were an institutional build-to-rent operator deciding on future sites, you'd be seriously factoring political risk into your decisions. And for individuals? Well, the political calculation seems to be that you can push landlords as far as you want and they'll still keep on providing the service that is clearly needed. If that turns out not to be the case, then that's bad news for everyone. Ultimately, there does need to be some kind of rental sector. Even if every landlord in Scotland sold up at once and the extra supply reduced property prices by 50%, you still wouldn't end up with an entire nation of homeowners. There seems to be limited political interest in the state providing this service instead of private landlords, so I'm not sure what the plan is here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a perfectly reasonable policy, the confidence of investors won't be affected and there'll be no ill effects. But if I'm not wrong, this might sound bad, but we need it to go obviously wrong very quickly. Politicians love to borrow policies that they see working elsewhere. So if this one seems like a vote winner and any negative consequences are a bit further down the line, it's not out of the question that we'll see talk of the same thing in England and Wales. And that's why this is something that investors in all parts of the UK need to be aware of. I'm not saying that the same thing will happen elsewhere, but there's a clear political trend and it would be silly to ignore it. We'll be following how this pans out in our free weekly news update, which you can sign up for using the link in the description. And even if this policy goes no further, there's still a plan in the pipeline that stands to make over 3 million properties in England and Wales illegal to rent out in a few years time. Watch this video next to see what that's all about.